All right, we're going to take a look at this exercise. I know that it says earn value exercise one because this is the first earn value exercise that is found in the project management fundamentals textbook that I wrote some time ago. You can download that using the link found in the uh, description below in this YouTube video. But in this series of YouTube videos, this is our exercise three. Once again, just like the previous examples, we have a time phase budget. In this case, we don't actually have a network diagram. As you saw last time, it really didn't matter a lot. But what's neat about this is we have the total activity, our plan value for each individual task, as well as the time phased budget, or PV over time. So that's going to come into effect and as you remember from previous videos this is going to be used when we calculate EV. This is going to be used when we're calculating SPI and SV. So let's take a look at this. There's some simple questions that are asked in this worksheet. What is the BAC for this project? Well that's really just the total planned value. And in fact, we see a column here for cumulative planned value uh, along the bottom. So this right down here is going to be the BAC. In which month will the majority of the work be completed? Well, that's going to be the month in which we have the highest number in the weekly total for PV. So in that case, it's going to be right here. So week five. Which month will the least amount of work be completed? Well, that's going to be month, I believe, month eight. Yeah, because we only have $6,500 that we're planning to get done in that month. At the end of month three, you get the following data about how the work is progressing. And uh, it gives you the actual costs. So our accountants have given us this value. This is our actual costs. This is our percent complete. Okay. And for all the other tasks, it's going to be 0%. And we can use this to calculate earned value. Okay, So if we look at the percent complete and we just transfer that down here, And then we want to calculate out these different values. Well, our actual cost is given. So we'll just write those in here. Um, yep, okay. Make sure I didn't get off track here. And if my math is correct, if I add all those up, I should get something like 59,900. Now to look at the PV, what we're going to do is actually look at the end of month three up here. So we're going to draw a little line at the end of month three. Yeah, not a very straight line. But you get the idea here. We're going to draw this line and we're going to look at what should have occurred. So for task A, we should have had 4,000 plus 4,000. That's about 8,000. For task B, 6,000 plus 6,000. That's about 12,000. This would just be $2,300. And this would be just be 5,000. For uh, all these other ones, like for um, E, F, and G, those would be nothing, right? Because we weren't planning to have anything done on those. But in fact, um, in our little status report, you'll notice here that it skips over those and goes straight to I and L. 
So I, we were planning to have uh, 7,800, 7,800, and 7,800, which is around about 23,000, uh, four hundred uh, dollars I believe and uh, then this last one here L we're planning to have two thousand four hundred dollars so that's going to be the PV at those points in time so I'm just going to transfer that information down to this little table here And if we add that all up, that should be right around 53,100. Now for the earn value, that's going to be this percent complete times the total planned value. So I'm going to go up here and look at the total planned value of 8,000, of, of 18,000, of 6,900, of 25,000 and uh, then also for I and for L of 31,200 and 9,600 and I'm going to do that math and actually then transfer that down here so 8k um, would be about 8,000 so forth and so on. You can do that math and then enter your results here. Okay, so now we can calculate everything else. So for CV, that's simply going to be, let me see if I can pick a different color here, that's simply going to be the EV minus the actual costs, and the SV is going to be the EV minus the planned, because we're comparing what we got done to what we're planning to do, or schedule. And then the CPI is going to be EV divided by AC. Once again, you see that C there. And then EV divided by planned value. So if I calculate these all out, I'm going to have something like a negative 400 for there, a 0 for there, a negative 1,000, a negative 3,000. Maybe I'll actually try and do this in black. It doesn't look like it's showing up as well as I would like. I don't know about any of you, but I'm a little bit colorblind, so some of these uh, colors just don't show up that well for me. And then the cumulative total for CV, I've got a negative 3,330. Whoops, I'm sorry. I was doing the wrong one there. For uh, CV, it's a negative 3,463. For SV, that's going to be a negative, actually no, positive, I'm sorry. It'll be a positive 3,000. 
337. And then we can look at the CPIs for each one of these. So we can, in fact, calculate these on a task-by-task -task basis, if you would like. Um, depending on the type of tasks you're doing, this might be useful because you might have a certain category of tasks that um, you find that the CPI is particularly high or particularly low on. So you might need to go back and reevaluate um, your baseline plan for those types of tasks. So a project manager might uh, be looking at this in a little more detail than we sometimes look at in the classes here because we're trying to generalize and unfortunately we don't have the time to do an entire project. So then what we can do is take these cumulative values, and I guess I forgot to tally up EV here. I'll do that now. And uh, so this is what we're looking at at the end of month three. And uh, if we actually were to uh, use these values here then to calculate the CPI, the SPI, the TCPI, and the percent complete, we would end up with a 0.94, meaning that for every dollar we put into the project, we're getting 94 cents out in terms of value. Okay, in other words, we're going to be over budget by the time we're done. In terms of schedule, we're actually ahead of schedule a little bit. The TCPI is related to the CPI, and basically it says if you want to end up with a CPI equal to 1 when you are done with your project, what does your CPI have to be going forward? Okay, so this looks at forecasting. What is the CPI that we'd have to maintain in order to end up at a CPI of 1? Now, it isn't just 0.06, it's or 1.06, like you might surmise, because the TCPI takes into account the percentage of the project that's actually complete. Okay, so a slight improvement in our CPI will actually get us back on track. So if we're able to change that 0.94 to a 1.04, we will actually be in a situation at the end where our budgeted at completion or our budget will equal or estimate at completion or what we get what our final costs are at completion. All right, so how is this project doing in terms of costs? Well, not as good as we'd like. How is this project doing in terms of uh, schedule? Well, a little bit better than we might like. What would be the cost to complete the remaining work? So in this case, what we would do is we look at the BAC minus the earned value, and we divide that by our CPI, whoops, CPI, and that would give us the cost to complete the remaining amount of work that's also known as ETC, okay? So in this case, I believe if you um, do that math, you're gonna end up with somewhere around 99,854. And so if you add that down here, uh, to the actual cost, which I uh, believe at this point is 59,900. Yep. Okay. Then add those two together, and you find out that the final cost is going to be. Uh, 159,754 dollars. Okay, and compare that to our, what we were figuring. Okay, so originally this was the value that we were looking at, 150,000 dollars, and it turns out that it's going to be about 9,000 dollars more. So not significantly different um, definitely a little bit over budget, but maybe we can get back on track with this as well. So relatively brief overview, but I think by now you've seen this enough times that uh, you can kind of see my logic and how I'm going back and forth. Once again, the main thing you need to worry about or think about is 
when do you use the PV values that are here? And that's in these tables here at that point in time. And when do you use the PV values shown over here? Well, that's when you're looking at calculating EV. Okay, so hopefully it helps. Hopefully you now have a good grasp of what's going on with earned value management.